And we're live! Hello! Welcome to the second May giveaway. Um, hopefully it's working correctly. Google has done some weird changes this week. But it says I'm live, so I'm just going to keep talking and hope that you guys are actually able to hear this. Anyways, so I got a little ambitious last week and all out of sorts because I was not sleeping a lot, getting my working on my painting, and I did my giveaway a little too early. So I was just so excited to do it. I, I was right in the high of finishing a painting and just really wanting to share. So last week, Vanessa won this piece, Song of Exile, and in celebration of finishing my latest piece involving that same character, Rama. And... Um, Believe it or not, between now and then, I've actually met another one of my milestone goals for Patreon. And that second goal, well, the first goal was to start up a Christmas card list, which I plan to do this year. It'll be open to everyone, to the public, so I will send you a Christmas card with my yearly image that I do every year, being yearly. <laughs> and uh, the second goal was to be able to afford a membership to Artist Market Online and the Graphic Artist Guild, which has a great book that comes with the membership. And these are two memberships that will help me keep up with the art market. And um, also, there are a lot of interesting articles on Artist Market Online. They also, both those resources offer interesting um, rates for artists, which it's so hard to know what you should be charging and what the industry expects as standard, but that's the gag guide is especially a good place to look for that. So you guys have helped me reach that goal. And so thank you very much. I can't wait to start that. And um, so let's get to the giveaway part. The next thing I'll be giving away is this piece here. It's another art card. This one is a limited edition art card, ACEO, of my piece, Amethyst. And as you can see, I've actually drawn in ink here on the marble design. And there's metallic jewels that I've put in there to match the bejeweled angel. Let's see if I can get closer. This is actually a metallic print. So let's see who wins Amethyst before I get to the demo. Oh, and a quick note, if you guys want to get in on the giveaway, it's only for my sponsors on Patreon who actually sponsor me at a $10 level or more. So you, every month I'll be giving away something. So if you want to get, on, to get in on that giveaway action, you can go to my Patreon page at www.patreon.com forward slash Angela Sasser. A-N-G-E-L-A-S-A-S-S-E-R. But uh, yeah, check that out if you're interested. If not, I'll still be doing Q&As, which is a lot of fun. And so just drop your questions, and I'll get to them during these little sessions when I can. So the winner is here in the tip jar slash giveaway jar. So far, I only have three patrons, so that means the chance of you winning something is really high, statistically. So now's a great time to get in on that. And the winner is Brenda Man Smith. You're on a winning streak, too. Congratulations. And as always, if you don't want this piece, you feel free to give it to a friend to tell me to randomly pick another a patron to give it to, or, you know, anything like that. So congratulations, and uh, thanks again for pitching in, my Patreon peoples. So, hey, I have a viewer. Hello, viewer. It's Vanessa. Oh, good, you're able to hear and see. Your chat popped up on the other window. All right, so... I'm glad you're here, Vanessa, because I'm going to try and show you my workspace since you asked that question. To blind you with my glasses real fast. Okay, so. 
see. Hopefully this doesn't equal horrible shuffling noise for you guys. This is my work setup. I'll try to hold it steady. Endless window. But I essentially have two monitors set up side by side. That's my Cintiq, which doubles as my main monitor. And uh, let me pull up Photoshop. So I really can't live without two monitors now. And why this is handy is because when I'm working, I like to go to see if you can see that. You know what? We'll get to that. First, let me show you the features of the Cintiq. When I'm working, see these buttons on the side of Cintiq? I like to use them for uh, different shortcuts. Each one has a shortcut, like this top one here is undo. And I can sit here and rotate my view, which helps me to make cleaner strokes. So there's a sensor bar that lets me do this number. So essential for digital painting. So undo and alt, which helps me do color picking on the fly. And uh, now I'm going to switch to screen share so I can show you that without having a shaky camera. So one moment, please. Sorry for the shaky camera, guys. Okay. I just need to, to put a camera right on my forehead. And Vanessa, if you have any other questions for me to go in depth about, let me know and I can do that. Especially if I'm not explaining clearly, just let me know. So I'm going to screen share Photoshop so I can show you my workspace. And the reason that two monitors is essential is that I like to have a second window of the piece showing. Although I notice the piece isn't showing up in Hangouts. That is strange. Well, I will walk you through it. Let me try and screen share again. Oh, Google. There we go. Now you can see the piece. Trying to see where the questions are coming up. Hmm. Ah. Okay. Oh, anyways. Back to Photoshop. When I work in a dual monitor setting, I go to Window, Arrange, and New Window for whatever the current file name is. And what that does is it starts up the second window here. And um, what, that's, what this allows me to do is to have both windows open, but I can go to this first window and be zoomed in anywhere within this first window, but still have the other window remain the same. And that lets me reference the overall piece without having to sit here and constantly be zooming out to see how the whole piece is looking. And that is something you always have to be aware of because when you're really zoomed in painting like this, you really want to know what your small changes are doing to the large the piece the other piece at large. So it's pretty cool because whatever changes are made on this window are reflected in the second window. So let me show you. So like it shows up on the other window. So it's it's all interactive. The next thing I like to do is instead of just kind of manually sitting here and resizing things, I also like to have my references up in a second window. So say 
here's my reference sheet for the Rama piece. Instead of having to sit here and flip through tiles like this, you can go to Window, Arrange, and Two Up Vertical. And so now I can sit here and actually have my references up while I'm working, and I switch between this all the time. You can even sit here and layer your montages between tabs on that side. And you can zoom in here with it being hello. You can zoom in in it here without the zooming affecting this other side. So that's pretty cool. And um, you can always switch back to tabs as well. Then we have the navigator window here, which is definitely useful. And uh, hold on one sec. I'm trying to figure out where your questions. Type in a question for me, Vanessa, if you're still around. I'm trying to figure out where it's, they're popping up on the window. You can even just type a response to what I'm saying in the Q&A box. So, Vanessa, are you with us? But I think I finally got it show up because I, I see your other question saying I'm able to hear and see. Oh, I'll just continue. <laughs> So I was talking earlier about having the Alt button on my Cintiq's Quick Bar. And yes, the Cintiq is very well worth the price. I actually did not start with this huge model. I went and got the 12WX. And yes, I can see your questions now. That's great. Yay, technology. But uh, the, the first model of Cintiq I got was the Cintiq 12WX, the 12-inch model. And I managed to snag that sucker off eBay for 600 bucks, which is actually really good because they, they retail for about a grand. And um, it, it's, it's definitely great because when I had the Intuos, the ones where you don't have a monitor that you're drawing on, I just couldn't make the connection between my eye and the tablet. I found it really uncomfortable especially when I was drawing curves. So drawing on monitor feels more natural, although I will always prefer drawing in pencil. So that's why you see a lot of my uh, preliminary drawings are still going to be, they're still going to be in, in a pen and pencil. But yes, definitely worth the price tag. See if you can get one off eBay. I managed to get one, mine like new. It smelled new. And um, now that the new models are coming out, they're dropping in price all the time. So keep your nose to eBay, and uh, it's definitely going to pay for itself in a couple of jobs if that's the way you're going going for it. And it's just a good good tool to have if you're going to paint as a hobbyist too. For professionals, it's indispensable. For hobbyists, maybe it's a little too much, but if you have the money, I say go for it. So, uh, what else? Oh, and I have a blog entry up on how I found my Cintiq and what kind of accessories I got for it and how I set up my workspace over at blog.angelicshades.com. Just look up search for the Cintiq. Yeah, that, it's definitely an investment, Vanessa. Uh, definitely check out eBay because that's going to be the best price. And I found it on Walmart.com, the 12WX. I think that's a good model for you to start out with especially now that the 13-inch one is out, so that means the 12WX just took a price drop. So check them out. You might find it at Walmart again, which had a really great price on it. Well, it's like 700 new. So uh, let's see. Back to shortcuts that are useful for Photoshop. So when you're painting in Photoshop, the reason why I say have the Alt key is because when you're using the brush tool and the alt key, when you hold the alt key it turns your brush into um, 
the color picker. And this is great if you're trying to sit here and color all of these subtle shifts in hue. So you can kind of color pick where your colors are overlapping and sit here and shade. So uh, that's how I shade and blend is with the Alt key. But I also, to answer your question about color palettes, I actually am kind of old school. I, I just use the color picker in Photoshop. The, uh, there's a color window which is, I don't know, that's the new one. Someone recommended Colors to me, but I haven't quite, haven't quite figured it out yet. But this, this is generally the one I use, just the default one. But Colors is seeming pretty cool in that it, it actually brings up a color wheel and you can sit there and do gamut masks within the program. So I'm, I'm trying that out, and it's only 10 bucks, so I might invest in that at some point because it's handy to look at a color wheel and decide what your color scheme is because if you have a wheel you can refer to that keeps your colors more hum harmonious than kind of randomly picking them out of thin air. And another thing I do when it comes to colors is I actually sit here and blend them on my piece because I'm, I'm a traditional painter at heart. My roots are in, in uh, watercolors I'm a watercolorist slash color pencil artist. That's the first, those are the first mediums that I really learned how to use. So I sit here and I actually blend swatches for myself. So I sat here when I decided my base tones and just sat here and made little blended swatches. And that's what I color pick from when I'm sitting here coloring. So it's a little old school, but it works for me because I, I just can't understand that like this if you sit here and color pick from this, it, it's really hard for me to wrap my brain around how going this way is going to make your color more neutral, going this way is going to make your color more saturated, and then whether to go, you know, up or down. It just leads to dead colors sometimes, and I'd rather mix them in a way that my brain understands so I can avoid having dead colors, which is something that's hard to do with digital sometimes, or rather it's easy to do your pictures can get really muddled. So I'm all about blending and mixing. And um, let's see, did I answer all of your questions? I think I could probably do a whole demo on actual blending and painting. But since I still have some time... Oh, I made notes. Other favorite Photoshop tricks. I really am old school. I just stick to the basics. And uh, if you guys have any other questions, let me know. Oh, and I use Photoshop CC, which is the cloud version of Photoshop. And I know cloud is not popular with everyone, but I really, really enjoy it so far. It's I have a single app license so what that, that allows me to do is spend twenty dollars a month and um, I can put Photoshop on any computer that I'm working on as long as I sign in and out of the computer. So if this computer were to crash right now I wouldn't have to call Adobe and convince them to deactivate my account or whatever. I would just sign out on another computer and install cloud on there and install any program that I needed on there. And the other great thing is they give you two gigs of cloud storage via the, the Creative Cloud, the Adobe Creative Cloud. And uh, they also give you a Mac license, so if you switch between a PC and a Mac, which I used to, I don't have a Mac anymore, but I did, it's worthwhile for being able to have a legit version of Photoshop on the computers. And um, I guess I'm also against pirating because it I really love this program and I want to support people who made it and the only thing I don't like about the whole cloud thing is that if I it does check if you're online when it first boots up and then you can use it but if say I miss my bill I'm worried about if you know, I can't use my program because I didn't pay my bill that month, or that's the only fear I have with it, but 20 is not so much that I can't stop having premium coffee 
mm, Starbucks, lots of premium coffee, and just pay for it. And uh, you do get to preview any new features first, and it's like you've bought every future version of Photoshop ever. Anything that comes out is going to be rolled out to CC members first. So, um, yep, CC is good, but if you don't want to invest in a cloud program, I think CS6 is their latest version that they've said they're going to keep updated. <coughs> Excuse me. Talking myself, horse. But, um, yes, so Photoshop CC is good. Oh, yeah. Glad I could help, Vanessa. Yeah, it's crazy how um, Photoshop was not really made for this purpose, but there are some amazing things that it can do for digital painting. Like, I'll show you my brush set because I, I used Jonas DeRose brush set, and there's a brush for, for everything. I have to admit, I cheated on this hair, this glorious Rama hair. I have to show you the, the hairbrush. First of all, there's a stubble brush. And if you've tried to paint stubble from scratch, oh, that's a hairbrush. Stubble is the most crazy thing to try and draw. Actually, I'm just going to add more stubble to him so you can see how awesome this is. Stubble. You make it the right color. More stubble. Hobo Prince Rama. Oh. So really, it's, I mean, I don't even have to work for that. So that's another great thing about digital painting, is that some things you can do more easily digitally. Not to say that it will draw your picture for you, but it definitely can help, especially when there is stubble. And then the hairbrush. Oh, and you can find this brush set on DeviantArt. I'll link it in the description of this video once it's on YouTube, after it gets automatically uploaded. But the brush set comes with every brush ever that you could need. So, like, if I want to add more, you know, tendrils of flowing hair here, this hairbrush is really all I use. So, my the way I paint is that the pressure that I'm putting here is very light, and the Cintiq can detect that. Much like the Intuos, but it, I think you can have a little more control with that. So you, that that's how I painted this glorious hair. It's just really just overlapping layers of this brush from Jonas. And uh, it's amazing. I love it. So... Ooh, too much glorious hair. And um, so, yeah, it's great. You should definitely check it out. Corel Painter I've heard great things about, too, but it's like, eh. Every time I try to load up Corel, I treat it like Photoshop, and then I, I run away screaming because it doesn't behave like Photoshop. But from what I understand, it does a great job of emulating oil paints especially so it might be worth looking at too I just it's cheaper than Photoshop it's just a one-time fee of like three hundred fifty dollars I think and the newer version seems closer to Photoshop if you're used to how Photoshop is get the newest version but um and you can trial it if you want to see if you'll run away screaming from Corel like I did Wee more hair. But yeah. It's funny because um, I almost feel don't feel like I'm accredited to do digital painting because I still feel like I'm learning so much about it. Like I I feel like this piece and the Kushiel's Dart piece probably the first time I ever made a digital painting work the way I wanted. And that's taken me so long. I still I feel more comfortable with color pencils, but it's nice to be able to have multiple skills, I think. Yeah, man, I should publish this new version with all the hair. Rockstar, baby. So, yep. 
Any more questions? We're almost out of time, so I can take a quick one. Oh, I can talk about, since you're talking about being interested in digital painting, another great thing that I didn't know for years was that brush opacity can be controlled by the pressure you're putting on your, on your stylus. And that makes digital painting so much easier. So if you go to your brush palette, which is this little icon right here, you can go to transfer and put your opacity jitter on pen pressure and that way the harder you press the more opaque your brush will be and the lighter you press the less opaque your brush will be. It lowers the opacity levels pretty much and that <laughs> that opened up so many doors for me because I remember one of my good friends was like you don't know what opacity jitter is? How have you, how have you lived? So definitely uh, turn on that opacity jitter if you're getting into digital paintings. It will save your life. And um, see if there's any interesting things. Oh, let's see. Oh, the brush set is... The Jonas DeRoe set, and I'll put a link to it. It's on DeviantArt, so I'll put a link to it in the description of the video for this Hangout on YouTube once it's done uh, automatically uploading. So, thanks. It was really awesome. I'm, I'm very excited to finally answer some questions, and thanks for joining me. It was great to have you, Vanessa. And those who watch this later, I hope you enjoy it and leave me some more questions that I can get to you at a, in a later session. So, congratulations, Brandon Matt. And good night. Thanks for joining me. I'll catch you next time. Bye.